So, uh, hello and welcome back, everyone. Today uh, we are going to continue our uh, Tesla series. And um, without further ado, firstly, Shashank, thank you for your time again. And uh, let's get let's get started. So, Shashank, do you believe that um, a lot? You know, or at least do you believe what a lot of people say that Tesla is a auto manufacturer so they are their specialty is only cars and that's what they're about when you when you look at valuations comparisons and stuff like that so what's your opinion agree disagree you know maybe so let's talk a little bit about that uh, shashank two words absolutely disagree hmm. um so to expand on that yeah tesla is known for its batteries uh, and its cars and being the these amazing car man, uh, manufacturing a uh, company but there's a lot more to it they took their battery technology and have extended it beyond use of just cars and into home storage and commercial storage there has been a uh, usage of batteries for things like in power plants they'll come to in a bit uh and they are trying to make homes more self sustaining by having solar roofs which also they own as part of the solar city acquisition and to come back to complete the cycle they provide the battery packs for it so there's a lot more to tesla than just making cars and for me i think of this as a sleeping giant and their next big revenue generator yeah and and i agree with you shashank i think it's it's very incorrect when people say that oh you know i'm comparing tesla's valuation to let's say toyota or i don't know i mean you just name volkswagen or whatever you know company that's out there they say oh we compare this, this these people make a million cars tesla makes what like i don't know 100000 cars so hence it's you know it doesn't so many different uh, numbers that people throw out in terms of why it shouldn't make sense so totally agree with you uh, so shashank can you talk a little bit about uh, tesla batteries then i mean you know what's what's your opinion on the battery side of the world uh, uh, within tesla as an organization sure batteries actually play a very very key role in the company tesla uh it's not only used for its cars which is probably its most important business unit as of now but batteries are required or essential if the world has to move away from fossil fuels and start using renewables and given elon musk overriding goal was to get the world rid of fossil fuels this plays a, an important role and batteries as of today are not good enough to be able to hold that amount of energy and be able to deliver it quickly that being said the company that's doing some great work and innovation in evolving batteries from the manufacturing of them to the chemistry to just pushing the boundaries of what a battery could do is tesla like this year every year they have this one big meeting uh, where they talk about what is the company focus on like last year it was ai this year it was battery it was called the tesla battery day so that way it's constantly evolving and that leads them into making better cars with longer ranges and that is what is phenomenal but beyond that that uh, like these batteries could be used for a variety of other energy storage needs most uh, more specifically in two kinds which is home storage and commercial so home storage is where you have a solar panel on your uh, roof but then you have during the summer months you could have during the day so much more energy which is being generated which is just wasted that could be harnessed and used at night and further reducing your energy bill and then you obviously have the mega packs which is their commercial usage for places like uh, data centers or in other uh utilities uh, level installations interesting interesting yeah and um, i actually you bring up a good point here right in terms of um, data centers and and things like that because one of the most important um, 
things that services a company requires is an always on mentality at least that's how we expect all our things to run and you know when with the onset of uh, cloud computing and stuff like that it's important for my data center to be always on right i think that's the basic uh, necessity that that's needed and um, I think that's that's a great point there, uh, Shashank. So, okay. And uh, do you have any examples of the Mega Pack? And can you talk a little more about it, uh, Shashank? Sure. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of data centers in the world are using it, but I don't think they have made it public. But their data centers require a lot of energy. They are massive energy hogs. So, trying to offset it, what they tried doing is, and they've always tried and data centers actually have been trying to push the boundaries around where can they reduce the energy footprint. So installing uh, solar panels on their uh, data centers to now creating these battery packs so that some part of the energy which was generated during the day, which would rather be wasted, will now go back into their uh, uh, systems for cooling needs. But the one which is exciting me the most is this battery pack that's coming up a battery pack installation that's coming up in California. It's called the Moss Landing Power Plant, uh, which is slightly south of San Francisco or Bay Area. And this one is supposed to be the largest uh, battery installation, which they would use from all the solar and wind farms to store energy and then supply it to the residents of California. Uh, and the reason I'm very excited about this is this is what is going to basically start making solar and wind more viable options. And when I talk about it, uh, given we are recording in February, 2021, uh, a couple of weeks ago, Texas went through this massive cold snap and they lost power. Uh, there's a lot of chatter around, oh, it was because of the natural gas and oil wells are drying up because of the cold weather or some other folks saying that it was because solar and wind did not perform at their optimal levels. If you had battery packs, there would be enough storage which would be created, which would have helped not all days, at least some of the earlier days uh, of Texans getting the energy required. And hopefully the issue would have not been as painful as it was as we see it today. So I, I think these mega packs are going to be very vital in the future of how our renewable energies get maintained and built up across the globe. Hmm. It's, uh, it's interesting you say that and maybe, of course, it's it, <clears throat> whatever happened in Texas, uh, Shashank is really unfortunate, should not have happened. And, you know, I think um, my thoughts go out to uh, everybody in Texas that that was affected, but maybe this is a turning point, uh, you know, for Tesla as a company, and probably even the technology of of batteries to uh, transform and uh, maybe change uh, lives, and you know, change the way people think about about certain things. So, uh, moving on, uh, Shashank, uh, microgrids, right? So we've heard about the auto bidder technology and all of that. So, what's your thinking on on microgrids, and you know, where where could they be used? How could they be used? Uh, you know, useful, and uh, just an opinion on on that, and maybe a brief about the technology as well, uh, Shashank. Yeah, that's a great question, right? So, today, when most people think about solar energy or uh, think about uh, utility scale renewable energy, they think of these massive uh, utility companies with large solar farms. Yes, that is good, that is useful, that is required at some level. But if you start looking at the problem from a first principle basis, it's all about energy generation and usage and energy management. And given how the US is very a, a country where there's more suburban population than true urban or true yeah more than true urban there's a lot more single family homes and with the improvements in solar technology where it's the efficiency is increasing by leaps and bounds you can start seeing houses being able to generate enough energy for themselves but given that 
we all live in a community how do we ensure that what is access for me can be used by somebody else and how can we be as a sustainable community so that's where the whole concept of microgrids comes in where it's energy distribution is distribute uh, is distributed it's self sustained and self reliable and this is great because then you are reducing on energy transmission because if the two of us are neighbors and i'm generating more energy and uh, you need more energy for whatever reason you don't have to go and ask the utility company to send you more energy but literally take it from my battery pack or my solar grid uh, for my rooftop for a few hours or a few minutes so that way the energy in the neighborhood is kind of in the same sink and there's not too much of uh distribution loss which happens not uh, what do you say due to transmission but that is just one piece of it now when you start combining multiple neighborhoods where each neighborhood if it's generating if one neighborhood is generating excess of power to another neighborhood that needs more power as a neighborhood you could start selling it and making money so that way you are being not only carbon neutral but probably helping offset others as well in their energy usage which is again great for the environment mm mm-hmm. yeah and uh, it's very interesting you say that i think for something as useful and important as energy and you know electricity and things like that uh, even from a design perspective i would think that it's better to uh b- better for the overall network to be distributed as against you know have this hub and spoke model where if there's some if there's an issue with the hub then you know all spokes are affected and you know your end points are also affected whereas if you have this distributed system uh you know if one particular node is affected at least the other nodes can you know uh, chip in and ensure that the network stays alive so i think it's uh it's amazing uh, you say that and i think it is it is a uh, fantastic uh, technology shashank and uh, you know i think you also uh, we spoke about reduction of transmission loss as well because if we are moving from let's say a centralized uh, you know unit right so let's say a centralized hub to um, to you know to a destination that's very far away there's also a lot of transmission loss which can be avoided in a model like this so it it also ends up building a much more efficient uh, system in uh, in my opinion so i agree with you on on that point as well shashank so fantastic so uh, moving on uh, shashank so what what's your opinion on uh, solar roofs like you know things haven't picked up and you know things like that so it it's still not like in my opinion it's not reached its potential but uh, i'd love to hear your thoughts on this uh, shashank is that that's very true i i think this is probably the trickiest part of tesla as a company right um where elon started a uh, solar city with his cousins sat on the board but it was run by his cousins they were still not making enough of money then elon decided to like acquire a uh, solar city uh they have gone through multiple iterations now at they are at solar roofs v3 which is basically solar panels shaped like roofing tiles uh and they claim they're much better at uh, energy capture than most of the others in the same space at the same time there are a lot more the tiles itself are far more durable i think if i'm not wrong elon said 5x but the biggest challenge has been around installation the time it takes for someone to install a solar roof has varied and i've hear, heard things where people have varied from 4 weeks to 4 months and mm-hmm. the installation challenges has been very painful for uh tesla and it's been having a lot of teething troubles and they are trying a few new things where they're trying to ramp up the installations uh they are trying to ramp up the manufacturing as part of their uh, giga factory in buffalo uh new york at the same time what they're trying to do is they're trying to uh, train a whole bunch of third party contractors to then start installing it because i i think one of the things tesla realizes is they themselves could not build up a fleet of uh installers who could create do this installations quickly enough uh 
they're all, what I've been hearing is they used to always have backlogs. You could apply and buy a Tesla a solar rooftop and wait for a whole year before it gets installed. And if you're trying to re-roof your uh, house, that would turn out to be a very painful endeavor. So these are things that I need to do. I don't think the company has given it enough love. And I think Elon now has started shifting his focus on this part of the business. And I'm hoping this one takes off soon because this one, along with the battery evolution would be the game changer, which can give you all the goodness of your microgrids, uh, better uh, mega, how do you say, rooftop installation of solars for data centers as well. It could just be a big game changer and an inflection point. Interesting. Yeah. And I, I think uh, to add to what you said, what Tesla is probably doing to make this easier is earlier when I had to uh, invest in a solar roof, I, it, it was it was like a capital expense for me. I had to put all of that 30, 40, 50, 60 thousand dollars, depending on the square foot of my uh, of my roof. I had to put all of that up front. And um, over time, I think what I see Tesla's kind of understanding that, okay, a lot, not a lot of home buyers can, you know, will have that much of capital to kind of put into uh, put into a solar roof. So what, what they're also working is with banks. And, you know, we also spoke about how Tesla is also considering to be partly a financial company uh, in, in the previous um in the previous episode so i think maybe moving moving it as moving it from a capital expense to um, you know more of an operating expense uh, would probably make things better where you say okay you can pay whatever 100 200 dollars a month uh, over you know the lifespan of this which is x number of years and you know it's it's yours so uh, that's the other thing that probably will work, will start working in the favor of um, solar roofs and uh, stuff like that uh, shashank so uh, okay, so uh, moving on, I think, uh, you know, I think one last uh, point, because we promised to keep this, uh, keep the shot is, so what what's beyond uh, on the energy side, uh, Shashank? So what's your opinion as to, we spoke about a few things here, but what else can, can the company do or should the company do or is the company planning to do? Yeah, that, that's a great question, right? So now let's look at energy as a whole, right? We have spoken about two parts of it. We have uh, spoken about the energy storage, which is batteries. We have spoken about energy generation, which is the uh, solar roofs. But there's a third component to it, which is the management of management and usage of this energy in a home or in a given enclosed environment. And that is where your HVAC systems come in. So today, if you think about it, waste a modern home is built you uh, use up a lot of energy to either cool your uh, uh, home down or you use a lot of energy to heat your home up uh, and the certain parts of the home which are warmer because of the activities being uh, taken place while certain parts are cooler now if you think about it each of these activities are done in isolation and hence there are a massive uh, drain on the energy usage and if you start thinking about it holistically you can start identifying how to get smarter about usage of energy like warming up only specific parts of the house when needed or taking energy generated from one part of the house and transferring it to another part of the house where, where it's needed so tesla has been thinking about getting into the hvac space which literally does this of trying to be smart around how to generate and use heat within a system and closed system like a house so there's not too much of details around how they plan to do it and i'm very interested but i think this is going to be a great way of reducing the energy bill and what happened is now you think about all three coming together your solar uh, roofs will continue generating more and more energy as the technology improves your batteries can start storing more and if your HVAC systems don't use as much of energy as they currently do, there's more energy that can be used for other things, potentially given back to the grid or given to other parts of the neighborhood. If you look, think about a microgrid architecture. Very interesting. Yeah. Or it's even a more basic thing as today, there's always some part of your energy which is required to be as part of the grid. Maybe your reliance on the grid reduces a lot more. Hmm. 
it's it's uh, very interesting you say that and um, yeah and i think uh, one i remember reading somewhere that uh, the efficiency overall efficiency of uh, the tesla uh, hvac in cars is is way better so it's way more efficient than traditional cars so if they could just use that and you know i think the analogy that i was giving someone is if you think about it a car is like a small room right i mean you know of course way smaller than a house and probably much smaller than even a small room that uh, any of us would would live in but but if you think about it if you could uh, extrapolate that um, that same technology into a house like you said uh, we would have way more efficient uh, hvac uh, systems uh, you know in uh, in in existence right so i think it's uh, that that's also a fantastic uh, point uh, shashank so um shashank any any final thoughts because i think this has been it's been fantastic i think we've uh, you know i I've, i've learned a lot i'm you know of course maybe shared some of my opinion on this as well but any any final thoughts uh, shashank like my only final thoughts are like i think the future of tesla energy is going to be very exciting and that is the the sleeper which when re- gets fully realized uh, to its potential will be a very big revenue source and that is what i think will power tesla to be a trillion dollar company which i truly believe tesla will become one day i completely agree with you i think uh, that that day is not very far and you know i just want to i want to uh, end this by just talking about what we started um, you know this episode with was please don't value tesla as an automotive uh, company because that's not what it is it's a lot more than just making cars and trying to sell cars right so i think that's that's my two cents so thanks a lot shashank i think this was uh, very helpful and uh, very insightful for me and i hope the listeners loved it as well it's always a pleasure